I just finished FMA Brotherhood for the first time, and that was good. I know everyone says it, and the style did take some getting used to, but by season five, I was in love. And not just with greed. One thing that really stood out to me, though, is how much I liked all of the villains. Usually, villains basically end up being forgettable, repetitive, and or more emo than a pop star who's going out of her way to prove that she can be emo just like everyone else. But FMA Brotherhood's villains turned out really well, especially the punk rock gang that I like to call the Seven Deadly Homunculi. Seriously, the writers did a great job of personification. Now, in fiction, personification is kind of difficult because you kind of have to make this concept into a person, but you also have this to have this person represent a concept. The writers of Mab did a fantastic job, and so I decided to do a seven-part series about each one of my favorite dysfunctional anime family. Now, I'm going to do this more as an analysis than a synopsis, so I'm going to make the backstory pretty brief. The homunculus in the bottle created the seven homunculi out of his seven deadly sins. They were made to serve him and separate himself from these flaws. He went on to be a fantastic father, bullying, using, and drinking his children when convenient to his plans. And yes, I said drinking. These homunculi are basically humans 2.0, without alchemy, but with super speed, super strength, and some individual superpower to make them look a little bit more cool. Most of them have super he supernatural healing, nor a Boris tattoo, purple eyes with vertical pupils which periodically turn into threatening red orbs of light, and egos larger than the Shingy Desert. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the homunculi in the order they died, since every single death has some freakish degree of importance. With one exception, I'm going to skip greed for now. So we're going to start off with the Lust, who's a little bit weird. I mean, she wears a low-cut dress and has a sultry voice, but she isn't lusty the same way that greed's greedy or envy's envious. Ignoring, you know, that one really weird line she said when Mustang killed her. You killed me. I hate losing. But there are worse ways to die than at the hands of a man like you. Instead, she tends to inspire lust in others, and through this, fuses them. This theme is kind of emphasized with her special ability, her ultimate spear fingernails, which can cut through anything. You know, she can get past your defenses and cut you down, taking control away from you, that kind of thing. Also, long painted fingernails are kind of a symbol of feminine wiles in movies. I mean doesn't really make that much sense in real life. I don't think guys actually notice fingernails, but I could be wrong. Anyway, she gets along pretty well with other homunculi, especially Gluttony, who kind of treats her like a mom. Yeah, I know. Because she can fret up pretty well with everyone, she acts as manager and middleman for father through most of season one. Despite her seeming importance to the homunculi as a group, Lust really doesn't do all that much on screen. I mean, she dies. Yeah. But before I talk about her death, I'd like to briefly discuss her views on humanity. Now, all of the homunculi have varying degrees of condescension towards humans, that's kind of in their job description, but Lust is one of the few who is actively sadistic. She enjoys watching people sh suffer. Nothing can make her happier than seeing her plan work out in such a way that somebody is in pain because of it, especially if that person is a worthy opponent. But in general, she seems to view humans as kind of deserving of this pain, as people who've just, they're walking into it. They're, they are the ones who are the architects of their own downfall, at least in her opinion. She never shows an ounce of remorse for her manipulation of Havoc, because she views it as his fault that he allows himself to be manipulated by her. And if he can't see through her, then he deserves what's coming to him. On an interesting note, one of the first things that happens in the episode where they ultimately kill her is Lust fights Mustang and Havoc. 
and in this fight, she paralyzes Havoc and injures Ladies Man Mustang. I think that this is a little bit of a... Now, I'm definitely... I think I'm almost certainly seeing things in this that might not have been necessarily written in there, but it seems to me like there's a, an importance in the fact that she paralyzes Havoc. The only person that we've seen her on screen use her feminine wiles on. I think that this is supposed to hint at the effects that lust can have on your freedom, on your ability to act on your own, on your ability to live without being controlled. But, you know, that that's mostly, I think, a matter of interpretation. It It's also at least partially there to just heighten the drama of the scene. Anyway. Lust then leaves them to die on the ground and proceeds to attack Hawkeye and Alphonse. Notably, the first thing she does is taunt them about the people she just killed. Now, Hawkeye does kind of pinboard her full of bullets first, but then she gives in to her grief about Mustang's death and basically gives up. Once again, showing that Lust is a manipulative little uh, witch. But then, just in the nick of time, Mustang, remember the ladies' man, steps in, literally brings Lust to her knees, and burns her to a crisp. Definitely some irony there in the playboy taking down Lust, but I think the more important side of this is that the playboy took down Lust in order to protect a woman and child he cared about. Also, the Lustful are purged of their sinfulness through fire in Dante's Purgatorio, it's just kind of going to be a running theme in these videos. Alright, so that's basically what I could come up with for Lost. Tell me in the comments if you could come up with anything else. Next up is going to be Gluttony. But that's going to be the next video. You know the drill for liking and subscribing. So, in the meanwhile, just keep an eye out for me and have a good day, everyone.